Programs. On various programs uh, related to psychology. So today we have webinar on positive psychology taken by Arpita Roy. She's RCI licensed clinical and rehabilitation psychologist. So now we are going to start with the webinar and I still request four of people to please turn on your camera. Hello. Am I audible? Very good evening to all of you. I hope I am audible and visible to all. Myself, Arpita Roy. I will be the facilitator for this webinar. I am an RCI licensed clinical and rehabilitation psychologist. So I have been working in both academic as well as clinical fields, which includes neuropsychiatry clinics, psychological treatment centers, the addiction come rehabilitation centers, audiovisual production house, where I have been associated as personality development counselor. Also, I have been attached to the National Trust. You might have heard of it. It's a government welfare body for autism, cerebral palsy, and mental retardation. Also, I have been associated with schools and NGOs. I have been a former lecturer at the University of Calcutta and I have experience in working with clients having organic disease, mood and anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, personality disorder, mental retardation, childhood disorders, and also I deal with LGBTQ community. I also give family and marriage or couple counseling where both premarital and postmarital difficulties are being dealt appropriately. And I have also worked with special conditions like deliberate self-harm, bereavement, substance abuse, and learning disability. I'm an expert in conducting psychometric assessments for adults as well as children. I had my private practice online as well as offline, and I'm a trained psychotherapist, and I use my experience into customizing different therapies, which include CBT, REBT, DBT, MET, play therapy, supportive psychotherapy, and SLBT with my clients. So in today's session, we are going to discuss more with regard to positive psychology. I have just now shared my screen. Kindly confirm if you all are able to see the screen. Then I shall proceed. If you people will be having any uh, questions or queries, you can uh, put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand. And... Uh, that would give all of you an opportunity to communicate and also there would be no overlap of voices. So today we would be discussing about positive psychology. So as you can uh, see the screen, as I will go about with the discussion, I uh, keep on sharing certain things on the slide for a, a better reference. So this presentation is only for sharing during the uh, webinar. So you can take notes. So when we are talking about positive psychology, what comes to your mind? Let us make the session quite more interactive rather than being in, you know, going about in a boring way. So what comes to your mind? When you people also thought of joining this workshop, uh, you came across this, okay, positive psychology. So what came across your mind or what is it? You don't have to come up with any definition based on your understanding. What do you think? What is it? You can type it in the chat box here or you can raise your hand and you can share in your words. That would also become easier for me to understand and accordingly I'll also proceed. Yes, any of you would like to add? One of you mentioned about positive mindset, okay? Waiting for others also to reply. To lead to a positive life, fine. Positive life, okay? 
but generally what comes to people's mind as we know is like beats uh, like uh, any uh, people coming from any background when they come across this term psychology they're like this is something with regard to some abnormality so what do you think about this is it the same the thing that we are talking about positive psychology also or it is something different so in today's session we will be discussing about positive psychology and cultivating and sustaining a good life how to go about with it one of you have mentioned about an optimistic approach and positive aspects of human life such as happiness and strength great so let us then understand uh, uh, on this parts in a much more better way so yes there are a lot of myths with regard to it we will also be discussing about that part so positive psychology is basically a key to understanding why are people unhappy yeah that's what we get to see in most cases when you will be talking to someone the main thing that you will be seeing that they are complaining about things that they are not happy about so what is it that is making them unhappy few of the points you people have identified we will also be identifying few more points as we will go ahead with our discussion and at the same time we would also be discussing what are the possible ways and how it is going to benefit an individual if he or she is going about with it in a healthy way so dr martin ep seligman the father of positive psychology so as you can see out here so new york times best selling book on authentic happiness head of the positive psychology center at university of pennsylvania and former president of american psychological association so who doesn't want to be happy i mean everybody but still we are struggling and uh, we are not able to so what is it that is you know stopping us to feel fulfilled or to feel happy what is that thing so we will first start with a little bit of history yeah this history is not boring so a little bit i would uh, you know share so see talking about uh, positive psychology then before world war 2 so when we are talking about this subject psychology as you all also know this is not something very new so before world war 2 psychology had three distinct goals first goal was to treat mental illness that means any kind of mental problem or psychiatric or psychological disorders or symptoms which are clinically significant so that is one thing that is to treat mental illness that is one part apart from that make life more productive and fulfilling life is there everybody is living but how to make it more productive and fulfilling and the third one is to identify and nurture an individual's talent after world war 2 the national institute of mental health was founded and the focus of psychology turned almost exclusively towards understanding and treating mental illness and that's why nowadays when people say that i'm going to a psychologist or i'm studying psychology the first thing they say pagal ho ka doctor yeah in colloquial terms this is what we get to hear from people right so psychologists come to understand how people survive and endure adversity challenges and trauma so by adopting a disease model psychologists made remarkable progress towards discovering how to repair psychological damage yeah psychological problems or psychiatric illness uh, some diagnosis maybe some individuals are getting so yeah psychology has proceeded uh, towards that part and they are doing great in those areas however psychology's other missions to promote productive meaningful lives and nurture talent were left unattended so nowadays now we are understanding that it is not only for the individuals who have got quote unquote a diagnosis a psychiatric diagnosis but others are also going to get help so there was a clear bias towards the negative aspects of human experience that drove psychologists that is to say it was assumed that negative motives were genuine and positive feelings were derivative or inauthentic so traditionally in psychology 
the focus has been on identifying and treating mental health problems such as depression. This is critically important for those who are facing mental illness. However, it provides an incomplete picture of mental health. So when we are talking about mental health, mental health does not only mean that uh, you will be free from psychological issues. It is not only that. What about your happiness? Positive psychology is a relatively new branch of psychology that shifts the focus from what is clinically wrong to the promotion of well-being and the creation of satisfying life filled with meaning, pleasure, engagement, positive uh, relationships and accomplishment. So, Positive psychology is basically a scientific approach. This is not like, you know, we are just like that making someone understand something. It's a proper structured scientific approach to the study of human thoughts. One of you mentioned, no, about perspective, about thoughts. So, yes, it's a proper approach, a structured approach to study the human thoughts, feelings and behavior. It focuses on building personal strengths. So if you are able to focus on building on personal strengths, of course, it is going to increase your self-esteem, your self-confidence. And all positive qualities and experiences in life. And exactly that's what we want. So positive psychology is not only about uh, putting on a happy face all the time. It's also about actually feeling happy. So, with regard to this part, I would like to show you all a picture. Take a look at this. So, here on one part, if we are talking about the traditional psychology. So, it is more about repairing and healing from disorder or illness maybe an individual was suffering from. So, it's more about dealing with mental illness. On the other hand, if we talk about positive psychology, it is not only about helping the individual overcome from the illness. But here in positive psychology, it is about flourishing, well-being, focusing on strengths and meaning. So it is about overall well-being. It is not only about talking about limitation with regard to any kind of mental illness. So many of us who have joined out here, we might have uh, visited a psychologist or maybe have taken counseling. Is it always that you got a diagnosis and that's why you went up to that? No. So positive psychology emphasizes the study of life above zero. So here, if you can see, if this is the continuum in the midpoint, you can see here is zero. Hmm? So on this part, this is about mental illness. So mental illness you could overcome. So you reach out to this part. And on this part, positive side here is about mental well-being, which we are talking about positive psychology. So positive psychology emphasizes the study of life above zero. Your zero is the line that divides illness from wellness and unhappiness from happiness. So traditional psychology has focused on life at and below zero. That is illness, pain and frustration. Life below zero indicates a life which contains stress, problems in life, physical, mental disorder, diseases, unhealthy social relationships, etc. These factors negatively influence a human life. So obviously, uh, if we are talking about this, these are some factors which is creating an influence in uh, the individual's life. But if we are talking about the life which is above zero, like this midpoint as we were talking, this is zero. If we are talking the life above zero, here this is towards the plus side, right? So life above zero covers a large area of positive aspects of human behavior like happiness, optimism, hope, trust, character, strength, compassion, empathy, mindfulness, resilience and so many more things are there so these are the areas that positive psychology is focusing on so it is not psychology is not about only disease and disorders so from next time when somebody tells you like that 
here you can get to understand. So it is not only limited to that part and positive psychology is actually, you know, benefiting us to lead a better life, happy life, healthy life. So in a tabular format, I would like to show you all how it is different from that of traditional psychology. So if we talk about traditional psychology, it focuses on people's problems and finding solutions attached to the problems. It is focusing on what is wrong with an individual and emphasizing the reduction of symptoms and prevention of relapse. Here it is talking about a disease model, which disorder based on that. So it is focusing on, on the person's weakness and overcoming the deficiencies or the difficulties or the lacuna he or she is having avoiding any sort of pain, running from unhappiness, a neutral state, like zero as a ceiling. So either it's below zero or it's coming to zero. Yeah, that means they have overcome. On the other hand, if we talk about positive psychology, so it is the scientific research of positive emotions and traits. It is focusing on what is right with an individual to boost character strengths and foster human flourishing. Health model, it is focusing on the health model, not on the disease, how you can be more healthy. Focusing on your strengths rather than focusing on your weakness so that you can grow and you know develop more on that part and nurture on that part. Building more on competences, seeking pleasure, uh, pursuing happiness, and there is no ceiling. It can go high. So here we were seeing that it is up to uh, the zero. Either it is less than zero or it is coming up to zero. Right. Let me go back to the previous picture. So it was this. In case of mental illness, either it is below zero. If this is the zero, below zero, that means mental illness or they are coming up to zero. This was the ceiling. But this side, you can see an arrow is there. So it's endless. So ceiling here is not zero. Right. So when we are talking about this parts, then we are getting to understand, yes, of course, there is a huge, you know, contribution and it's a huge, like it's, it's of great importance. So the foremost question of philosophy is why are, uh, uh, why one sh uh, should not commit suicide? One cannot answer that question just by curing depression there must be positive reasons also for living as well. So when we find that individual is, you know, trying to put an end to his or her life. Yeah, it might be so that he's struggling with something or some other mental health issue or depression. Like that. Okay, fine. The depression is treated. But also, we need to find out, is there any positive reasons because of which he or she will be alive? Right? So cultivating on the positive part. So if you realize how powerful your thoughts are, you would never think of a negative thought. Now the point is, many people actually say, what will I do? It just comes to my mind. And thoughts are powerful. So what will I do if this kind of thought is coming to my mind? So what do you all say? So is it that... Because of thoughts, everything is getting ruined. Is it that we can uh, bring about a change in our thoughts in any way? Is it possible? What do you all say? What's your opinion to this? I'll pause to take an answer from you all. Can we change our thoughts or do we have the power to bring about a change in our thoughts in any way? Is it possible? One of you mentioned it need to be diverted. Okay. Through diversion, we can manage. Okay. Anything else or any other explanation? Any of you? One of you mentioned about stop technique. Okay. Anything else?
self realization okay so with regard to these things what we are getting to understand is one of you also mentioned about affirmations that means yeah there are ways with the help of which we can actually you know uh, deal with our thoughts absolutely so so if you have realized how powerful your thoughts are you would never think a negative thought based on your negative thought you are bringing about the difference so if you can bring about a change to that obviously again in the other way it is going to bring about a difference and then you will be finding that life is worth living we have little knowledge and appreciation of the little things that make life worth living positive psychology help us to see the bright side of the daily tasking is it that actually individuals who often mention or complain about their life actually everything is bad in their life but it's about their perception so sometimes it is found that it's the thought process their perception is all biased so if we talk about this positive psychology approach with regard to this then the roots are in the humanistic psychology a holistic approach to human existence meaning values freedom personal responsibility human potential example like abraham maslow carl rogers rollo me we have read about their theories right so when we are talking about these parts then let's go about with a quote psychology has since world war 2 become a science largely about healing it concentrates on repairing damage with a disease model of human functioning but now we are getting to understand that it is not only limited to the area of disease so it's a very important part that we are getting to understand so if we are talking about this part then a focus on weakness is taking place like what is wrong with people what are the factors that impair the human functioning because of which he or she is not able to go about or perform or able to achieve on certain parts so a focus on weakness is taking place so if we are talking about the psychological abstracts then in that case if you check with the ratio you will see in case of anger anxiety depression just check with the numerics on the other hand if you talk about joy happiness life satisfaction you will see the ratio is 21 by 1 or 21 is to 1 it is not matching so more on the negative parts what about joy what about happiness what about life satisfaction if these things are not there and only if you are focusing on the uh, weakness how will it work so if you are focusing on the weaknesses only the picture will look like this so this is the mid part like just a while ago we were talking about zero and illness so you are focusing on these part so life is not only this how about this part this part is entirely missing you are focusing only on this shaded area that is not your entire life so it's a biased way of going about with the understanding or the interpretation of the areas which may be it is making you feel bad or sad right so misconceptions about weakness first fixing what is wrong automatically leads to well being so people previously used to think that whatever is wrong first we if we just fix it and everything is fine so positive effect and negative effect are not on the same continuum so from the picture just now we saw that it is a different part and the well being is a different part if you are just curing on that part you are coming to zero what about the life after that beyond that zero so getting rid of anger fear and depression will not automatically cause peace love and joy all of you who have joined out here you can like if you are doing anybody in your life who is not diagnosed with depression but still can you say that those people have mentioned that yeah i am in peace i am enjoying i am very happy no so that means it is not only the absence of a disease so the absence of mental illness does not imply the presence of mental health or vice versa so it is not only about the disease is not there so he or she is fine it is not at all like that so if we are talking about this misconceptions on weakness then 
someone who is on the zero does not equal to someone who is on the positive side. So are you working on this area so that you can move towards the positive part rather than being only in the uh, zero that is just absence of the disease? So this is one thing. Next thing, if we are talking about the misconceptions and weakness, then effective coping is reflected by a reduction of negative states. Example, it is not the absence of stress that is related to uh, successful uh, weight maintenance, but rather the ability to be effectively deal with the stress is also important. Right. Next, if we are talking again about the misconceptions and weakness, then a weakness focus can help to prevent the problems. When it comes to prevention, the question should not be how we treat the problem with problem X effectively. But how can problem X be prevented from occurring? Why will I wait till a problem or a disease or a disorder develop? Why not I will work on prevention? So why do people suffer from problem X? Versus why do some people flourish despite of difficult circumstances? Let us focus on that then only we will be able to grow better. So if we are focusing on our strengths, in that case, Martin Seligman mentioned, positive psychology is the scientific study of optimal human functioning. At an optimum level, we will be able to function that aims to discover and promote the factors that allow individuals to, uh, and communities to thrive. So if we are then focusing on the strengths, then what is the uh, what is right about people? Which factors promote human flourishing? So we need to identify on that. We have understood about it. When we are focusing on, we will be flourishing on the positive part. So here you can see now the shading is coming towards here. That means we are focusing on the strengths. So are we actually focusing on that? Or when we are saying few are happy, few are not, it is because of what reason? Is it any? Is there any reason behind that? So with regard to this, let us discuss on a more. So why can be positive psychology a key to human happiness? So yes, with regard to this, we have come across uh, individuals uh, uh, like Abraham Maslow, Karen Horney, and so many other individuals. So with regard to that, this is a model you people are all aware of, right? So when we are talking about this model, here you can see it is having a base, which is starting from the physiological or the biological needs, the very basic needs, like breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, excretion, the very basic needs, which is very much important for our survival, the biological, the bi physiological needs. Once that is getting fulfilled, then comes the safety needs where people are thinking about their safety. Be it safety with regard to their uh, you know, body, their uh, work or their family, their health, their property. When this is getting fulfilled, then they're moving higher where they are talking about love and belongingness. Here comes the friendship, the family, the sexual intimacy. So feeling loved. After that comes esteem. <laughs> Self-esteem, self-confidence, achievement, respect of others, respect uh, by others. And then finally, they're moving towards self-actualization. So when we are talking about self-actualization here, we are like morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts. So it is at the tip, highest on the uh, part. So when we are talking about self-actualization, how many people you have come across where they are saying that, yeah, I'm totally actualized, very happy and very satisfied. We don't get it. Why? Because they are already struggling with these areas. So here lies the issue because of which they are not able to go about and they are not able to feel happy. So what is this happiness then? How we can get that? So when we are talking about happiness, we just know we want to be happy. But if we are talking about how we can, 
it is not possible for us we, we are not finding out way something or the other so today let us discuss about seligman's happiness equation <laughs> yeah this is a formula h or happiness equals to s plus c plus v so what is it first of all enduring happiness set point circumstances voluntary and choices these things if we are able to go about with in an appropriate way we might be happier so when we are talking about happiness then happiness if we are putting it in a pie chart then it is going about with 10 percent of circumstances only 10 percent but we focus oh my life situation is like this the circumstances are like that but it is only 10 percent of your uh, happiness then genetics 50 percent activities 40 percent so a lot of things are there in our hand when we are putting it in this way so let us create and cultivate happiness so these are the ways how we can go about and do it in a practical way. Like three good things, mindfulness, savoring, optimism exercise, gratitude letter, strengths in action. Do we do these things? Many of us might be saying we are also not aware. Yes, we never think in this way. So if we are talking about doing three good things, so think of three good things that has happened. At the end of the day, do you ever do that? No, the day is over. I did this. I couldn't do that. This has not happened. Tomorrow, I will again have to plan for that meeting. This project is left. But what about the positive things? If you are not counting on the things that positively has taken place in your life, how are you thinking that you will be feeling happy? Write them down. Sometimes thinking in that way, uh, we might not come up with it in a very organized way. Reflect on how and why they happened. That is also very much important. When think, when that something has happened, we just, you know, say it repeatedly, it happened, it happened, it happened. Why did it happen? Did you look into it further? That's also very much essential. Next, mindfulness. Mindfulness is a process that we can practice every day, every situation. Every, every day we need to practice mindfulness. Are we mindful? Mindfulness is about thinking about here and now. All of us, we are present here. Maximum of us might be saying no. Because either we are thinking, oh, what happened yesterday? Or we are like, today this happened and how will, well, how will I manage? Or tomorrow it's starting or day after tomorrow. So either you are focusing too much on the past or too much on the future. What about here and now? What about the present? Sometimes people, you know, carry out with activities in an, as if in an autopilot mode. Stop that. Become aware, focused. Stay in the present moment. It is very, very important. Are you noticing your thoughts? What kind of thoughts are coming? So that is also very much important. Are you aware of the feelings that you are feeling? The images that you are having? The memories? Body sensations? So you should be aware of those each and everything and in a non-judgmental way. Oh, this thing has come to my mind. That means I am a bad person. No. That means you have already started judging yourself. No. You just observe the thing. Be a silent observer. Then in that case, a lot of situations you will be able to better deal with. If we are talking about mindfulness and using three senses, it's like, you know, what are the three objects that I can see with my eyes? What are the three sounds that I can hear? It can be any sounds. Maybe the bird is chirping. Maybe the ticking sound of the clock. Maybe an aeroplane is uh, there. So that sound. Okay. So these can be the simple things. So are we aware? No. Sometimes we are engrossed in our own thoughts. We are hardly aware and we are not focusing on any of these parts. Next, savoring, sharing with others. Many people often say, I don't have anybody or I don't prefer. So that, that's also important. Memory building, self-congratulation and self-validation we never do. 
but when it comes to self criticism we are very uh, much you know prompt and at it absorption understanding and growing from that that would also help us so find and go with the flow flow is the state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter the experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even as a great cost for a sheer sake of doing it so just go with the flow just enjoy the thing rather than going about in a rush okay so that's what apart from that when we are okay one of you have asked about memory building when we are talking about memory building many people mention that uh you know i don't remember things i forget and uh, because i forget i am also stressed i'm losing out on things and uh, not able to complete on certain areas so accordingly you plan out things be it you are going about with uh, you know making some charts or uh, be it you are uh, noting a do to list or what other things or in an organized way you are thinking or using mnemonics that will help you to go about in a more organized way so that you are not running out of things that would also be of help next another thing which we can do is a b c d e optimism exercise yes that's the name so first of all you will have to understand whenever uh, something is happening or a thought is coming to your mind or you're feeling in some way there is a direct connection between uh, the situation the thoughts the actions that you are doing and that entire feeling is your feeling the way you are observing or perceiving or feeling a situation i might be feeling in a different way so adversity is whatever might be the event or situation okay based on that situation what kind of thoughts are coming to my mind or what is it that i am believing okay and because of that then we are having a consequence so a leading to b then c or we can also say because of xyz type of beliefs i am perceiving a situation in a different way which other people would be perceiving in a different way so accordingly the consequences are taking place so once we have understood and organized the thing in this a b c format the next thing that we should do is disputation dispute with your beliefs or thoughts sometimes we have illogical or negative automatic thoughts you need to dispute then only as a reenergization you will be able to go out with a new structured way or logical way of thinking and your emotions and your behavior would also be changing now the question comes how will i do with my disputation is it possible those thoughts are just like that coming to my mind yes it is possible argue with yourself is it is important do you ever do this self talk many of us would be nodding our head no but yes it's important look for evidence for example i am saying oh he didn't wish me on my birthday that means he didn't uh, he he hates me what is the evidence he hates me is there any evidence or it is just my assumption my assumption does not equal to reality so it's how i am perceiving the thing another thing is looking for alternatives i am thinking in a particular way and i am interpreting something as i think are there any other alternatives in some other way it can be thought so what is happening the things which i have not been thinking earlier now i am trying to perceive those things in from a different point of from a different perspective that is going to be of help that is there another thing is talking about the implications what are the implications if i think in this way what is it that i am going to get how is it benefiting me or is it going to benefit me or what what i am going to lose and also talking about the usefulness so in this way if you we are arguing with ourselves we will be able to dispute and overcome and think in a much more rational or a logical way definitely it would be of great next gratitude letter or visit 
This is another practical thing we can do. Write a letter to someone expressing gratitude. We don't do it. But when it comes to something negative somebody has done, we are the first one to raise our hand or point our finger. This is also important. Hand deliver a letter to the recipient. You will also feel good. Read aloud the letter to the recipient. So obviously when you are sharing something uh, positive or uh, sharing some positive things about someone, obviously you will also feel good about it. Next, if we are talking about inspiration, everything can be taken from a human, but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. When we are talking about our attitude, our perception, it is absolutely up to us. Now, let us discuss about six core virtues that we need to focus on. Wisdom and knowledge, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence. Okay. So when we are talking about these parts, then let us discuss more in detail with regard to these areas because as we are finding that yeah, these are some practical areas. So with regard to this, we would be discussing about 24 strengths that we might be having. Okay. So when we are talking about these strengths, let us discuss more in detail so that we can use it on a regular basis. We can incorporate it in our lives. So if we are talking about wisdom and knowledge, so with regard to this, we can enhance more on our creativity. Thinking things in a creative way, working or solving on things in a creative way. Creativity is very important. Curiosity. If you are curious, you will get more knowledge. You will learn on many areas. Be thirsty for knowledge. That will also make you grow. Love for learning should be there. If you are like, okay, whatever I know, I, I know, I know everything and I'm very happy with it. I don't want to listen. I don't want to know anything more. Am I growing? No. I'm not. And also open-mindedness is also very much important. You also need to understand that every time, whatever I am thinking, whatever I am doing, that would be the correct thing and everybody must accept it and others should not have any other opinion that is a very incorrect way of thinking or, you know, believing in things. It, it doesn't work in that way. So you need to be open-minded so that you can, you know, accept different, uh, uh, you know, uh, perceptions as well. Or how different people are managing on things in a different way. Next is courage, honesty, bravery, persistence and zest. We need to nurture on these skills. Honesty or being honest in different situations, that's also a sign of courage. Courage always doesn't mean that, you know, I will do some sport, some adventure, or I'm not afraid of X, Y, Z person or uh, situation. It is not only limited to that. Next is humanity. Very, very important. Human relations. You need to be kind. Do you understand how he or she is feeling when you are passing on a comment or when he or she is going through a life situation? Many a times the answer is no. Unknowingly, you are also passing on random comments. Do you even know or are you even aware of his or her life situations? No. So kindness is very important. Love and social intelligence. Like socially understanding how to uh, say, uh, what to say, where to say, how much to say, where to pause. These things are very important. Then only you will be able to connect with others in an appropriate way. Uh, if we are talking about understanding humanity or socializing. These are skills. Next, justice. When it comes to justice, sometimes we are not there. Maybe you are supporting one person 
or maybe we are going about in a biased way, that won't work. So if we are talking about justice, then fairness is one very important thing. Leadership or having proper leadership skills so that you can carry out with a group or a team in an appropriate way. And also going about with a teamwork. Again, when you are going about with the teamwork, you also need the social skills, the communication skills, the understanding. These things are also very important. Then only you will be able to go about with the team, else that team will not work. That um, cohesiveness will not develop. Next comes temperaments. Here comes forgiveness, mercy. Sometimes we are not. We are very rigid. So in certain cases, we also need to look into the parts. Modesty, prudence, self-regulation. These things can help us. And lastly, transcendence. Like appreciation of beauty. Appreciate the good things. Excellence, gratitude, hope. Sometimes adding a little bit of humor. Always taking the things in a very serious way might not be of help. Religiousness, spirituality, these things would be of great help to us. So when we are talking about learning so many things, of course, we would be then applying these things in our, our life. So how will it then help us? Or will it actually help us? Of course, it will. Applying positive psychology enables us to appreciate and reinforce the existing strengths and virtues in both personal as well as organizational fields. This does not mean that we should avoid dealing with problems, but rather that we should deal with them from a positive and realistic perspective. That is what is leadership. Leadership doesn't only mean I am the leader, I have got the power in my hand, so whatever I will do, you will have to listen and I can dominate the way I want. No, that's not the appropriate way. So if we are talking about this uh, positive leadership, which we are using, using the skills, and then we are gaining. So when we are talking about this part, then let us discuss more about the goals of a positive leadership then. So with regard to this, it will create a culture that focuses on strengths of the character. If you like, if I'm talking about, a, I'm dealing with a team. And if I'm focusing only on, oh, you cannot do this. You are bad at this. You create a disaster on this last time. So I'm focusing only on the negative things. How will my team work? Everybody will be having some positive and negative or strengths and like, you know. So create a culture that will be focusing on the strengths of the character. Empower the individuals, the teams and the organization while achieving business goals. Experience a new and inspiring approach to work. Not like, you know, sometimes people think I will say very bad things. I will demotivate that person. And then only that person will, uh, you know, have that energy that, okay, I'll prove wrong. But every time it doesn't work in that way. Sometimes you are breaking that person psychologically. That's not at all a positive way. Appreciate and amplify what works at personal, group and organizational levels. Emphasize successes and strengths as a method for achieving continuous organizational growth and success. Then only we will be able to go about and carry out with the things in a much more better way. Researchers and practitioners have found that individuals utilizing its principles can enhance work and home life by assessing the strengths that act as buffers against unfavorable circumstances. So this is one thing. Next, balancing in, uh, immediate personal needs with long-term goals. What are the immediate needs and what are the long-term goals? You need to understand and then only you will be able to take adequate decisions or you will be able to prioritize and carry out with the things in a much more structured on an organized way. And that would also help you to go about with a better planning. 
right? So developing a more resilient psychological immune system based on optimism and self-esteem. Many a time we are able to manage on a lot of things in a better way if we are thinking or ex uh, expecting that something positive would be there. So accordingly, we perceive the situation, we carry out with our activities or we uh, are motivated towards that. So if we are talking about a real life, so in that case, almost everyone wants to be happier. I'm not only talking about happy. You might be happy. Obviously, if I ask you, do you want to be happier? Your answer would be, of course, yes. So almost everyone wants to be happier to feel happiness for longer time. Personal engagement in positive psychology and its practical application can bring you to a new level of the life. The way is not simple, but it pays off. The ways that we have discussed, those were the practical ways. So initially, when you are going to start with it, you might find, oh, it is a little difficult. It is going to take time and uh, it takes an effort. Yeah, it is. But that is never a waste. Those are certain things that will act as a treasure, we must say. So why not go about with that when I'm getting so many benefits out of it? Remember, positive psychology enables you to develop a more resilient psychological immune system based on optimism and self-esteem. Appreciate and amplify what works at the personal group and organizational levels. You can learn to be happier and it is possible. If we are talking about further more interventions, then we can go about with identifying signature strengths, using a signature strength in a new way, expressing your thanks, cultivating gratitude, gratitude journal, we never do. Many people, uh, when you come to going about with journaling, they mention, oh, I don't like journal uh, or diary writing. So gratitude journal is important. Until and unless you count the good things happening in your life, you will never feel happy. Say no to too many choices. Identify and engage in flow activities. Of course, mindfulness, self-compassion, random acts of kindness, not to show off, but actually doing it. A look back at life. One door closes, so one door opens. Keep that mindset. Oh my God, it's an end. No. You at your best, three good things in life, search for the scared, meditation, prayer, cultivating forgiveness, these things on a regular basis, if we can incorporate in our activities, definitely it is going to be of help. Apart from that, also there are some other psychotherapies. Every time everybody is not requiring a very structured therapy, maybe with regard to those parts you are able to do. But otherwise, yes, we are having acceptance-based therapies, mindfulness-based cognitive therapies, dialectic behavior therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, and rational emotive behavior therapy. So these kind of therapies are also there where if required, a trained professional or a psychotherapist or maybe a clinical psychologist can definitely uh, give the client and help the client deal and overcome with regard to the issues he or she is facing by equipping the client uh, with certain uh, techniques, which we can say that, you know, uh, they are getting equipped with it. Apart from that, we can also go about with scientifically supported interventions like happiness training, keeping a positive journal writing, gratitude, count your blessings, we never. We count what uh, like negative things have taken place in our life. Acts of kindness, three good things, identifying and using your strengths, not focusing on your weakness. Work over your weakness, but also make use of your strengths. So finally, we can conclude by mentioning, ignoring weakness will not promote well-being. You are there. You are working over it. Positive psychology is an addition to the field, not a replacement. 
we are not saying just you know only focus on the positive negative is there you are identifying you are working on that but addition to that also focus on the positive part negative psychology doesn't exist so when we are talking about positive psychology it is not that negative psychology is there it's not like that psychology reaches far beyond the subdomains of psychopathology and clinical psychology. So psychology is not limited with regard to those parts. And that's why we have been discussing today in so much detail with regard to positive psychology. Lastly, we will end with a quote. So only when you operate from strengths, you can achieve excellence. So with this, we end our session today. So when we are talking about positive psychology, definitely uh, we can understand that it is bringing us so much benefits, so many benefits we are getting. And yes, it is a proper structured way, which is helping us to be more happy. And it is a key to understanding the unhappiness so that we can work over those parts and we can develop on those areas in an appropriate way. By shifting our focus uh, on promoting the well-being and creation of satisfying a life which is filled with meaning, pleasure, engagement, positive relationships and accomplishment. So positive psychology is a scientific approach to the study of human thoughts, feelings, and behavior. And on focusing on building the personal strengths and positive qualities and experiences in life. So with this, we will be able to develop and uh, grow in a better way. deal with our thoughts and our emotions and our behaviors if we are going about the way we did discuss. So try to carry out with the things that we did discuss in a regular basis so that we can also be a lot more positive and happy or happier and fulfilling. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for your active participation, showing interest. I hope you people enjoyed the session and could learn a lot of things from here. Thank you, Priyanka, for mentioning it was a excellent presentation. Yes. Great to see you all here. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much.